see that by default nothing is happening here it is waiting for the button to be pressed this is the button here the right most i press it it goes into the loop and it starts to blink i press it again it stops see i press it and it goes into lo the loop now see i press the same button it stops now see what happens here i press the button it goes into the loop now it's in the forever loop performing the code whatever the code is like in our case it's blinking an led now as soon as i press this button now see i had hold it this button nothing is happening here now it is in another forever loop it is in the forever loop and it is waiting waiting for the button to get zero when once the button is pressed it it gives a one but as soon as the button is released the initial state of the button is zero then the button gets zero now it got zero now it broke out of the loop now guys once it's out of the loop now it is in the main loop waiting for the button to be pressed again i press the button again see it will start to blink again now i will press it and it will go out of the loop like this hello guys welcome to learning microcontrollers in this video i am going to show you how you can use a single push button to control the start and stop of the blinking of an led in a forever loop so the microcontroller i am going to use is pic16 fa77a and the programming software I'm going to use is micro C for PIX. So let's get started. So guys, this is our PIX 16 fa 77 a microcontroller. has 40 pins. It's a DIP version. And this is the push button I'm talking about. Easily available in the market. It's a momentarily push, momentary push button, tick tick button. And guys, this is an LED, 5mm crystal type LED. It is also easily available everywhere. So let's get started. First of all, we connect our push button with a PIX. So to connect a push button with a PIX, you will need a 10 kilo ohm resistor like this. Then guys, you have two pins for the push button. I name the one as VCC, other as out. You can shuffle these two pins, doesn't matter because button is not a polar component. So guys, now, first of all, you connect the VCC pin of the button directly with the VCC pin of the pick like this. Then guys, for the out pin, you connect it to the one end of the 10 kilo ohm resistor like this. Then from the same pin, you will take out your output. For the output, you can use any available digital input output pin of your pick. I'm going to use a pin number C0 for this like this. Now from the other end of this 10 kilo ohm resistor, send it to the common ground like this. In this way, our button is connected. And remember that the 10 kilo ohm resistor is at the grounding end. This means whenever the button will be pressed, a 1 will be sent. By default, it is sending a 0 to the pick. So if this 10 kilo ohm resistor was at the power end, then it means a 0 will be sent. By default, the button will be sending a 1. So in our case, when we will press the button, a 1 will be sent. So now next thing is the LED. So as you can see, LED has two pin, one longer and one shorter like this. I name the longer pin as power and the shorter pin as ground. You cannot shuffle these two pins at all. Longer is always a power and shorter is always a ground. Now guys, to connect this with a pick, you will need a 220 ohm resistor. You can use any resistor from 100 to 20 ohm. So I'm going to use this 220 ohm resistor. Uh, basically, higher the value of the resistor, the dimmer the LED will get. This is basically a safety resistor. It will save the LED from getting burned. Now guys, for the power pin, connect it to the one end of this 220 ohm resistor. Then from the other end of the 220 ohm resistor, send it to any available digital input output pin of your pick. I am going to use the pin number C2 for this. Now guys, for the ground pin, connect it directly with the ground of the pick. In this way, our button is connected, our LED is connected. So once this button is pressed, one time tick, the LED will start to blink or whatever the program is will start. But when you will press this button again for half a second, then this LED blinking will stop and it will go out of the forever loop. Now guys, similarly, you can use this button in various other programs to initiate and stop a program from start and stop a program using a push button. So let's get to the hardware. Let me introduce you to the hardware before we get to the programming. So guys, this is our hardware here. This is the LED and this is the push button I'm going to use. This is our pic 16 fa 7 a and that there is a picket 3.5. So let's get to our micro C for pick. So guys, this is the micro C for pick. Let me zoom it in. I'm using version 7.2.0. You can use a higher version as well. Click on file, new, new project. A new project wizard pops up. Click on next, write the name of the project. Single button, code, start, stop, tutorial by learning microcontrollers. So that's the name of the project I wrote. Select the path where you want to save your work. Select the microcontroller. I'm going to use a PIC16 FA77A and the device I'm going to use, the clock I'm going to use is a 20 megahertz like this. Click on next and finish. Now guys, before you do anything else, first of all, save your work. 
click on the screen and press Ctrl S to save your work like this. Now guys, the next thing is, first of all, initialize the LED pin. For that, we have the LED at which pin? We take it from the schematic. So our LED is at the pin number C2 and the button is at the C0. So we initialize the LED first. So we write trace C dot F2 equals to 0. This is our LED. And see that in case of Arduino, you write pin mode output. Here you use a trace register. 0 means it's an output and 1 means it's an input. So in case of LED, the pin is always declared output. Now the initial state of the LED, initially the LED must be off. Port C dot F2 equals to 0. Now this is like digital write high or low. High means 1, 0 means low. So port C dot F2, whatever is at that pin will be low now. So LED by default must be off. Now give some initialization delay. It's not necessary to give initialization delay, but I prefer you give some in the one time loop. 20 will do fine. Now this is our LED initialized. Now let's initialize the button. Just copy this, paste it. Now button is at the pin number C dot F0 like this and the 1. Now like in case of Arduino, uh, I said that you use a pin mode command. For the LED, it's output. For buttons, it's input. So in case of pick, it is a trace register and 1 means input, 0 means output. See, for the LED, it was output. For the button, it's input. Now make it button. And now the initial state of the LED must be 0. Oh, sorry, button must be 0. Why? Because our 10 kilo ohm resistor here, you can see that this 10 kilo ohm resistor is at the grounding end. Whenever a resistor is at the grounding end, this means whenever the button will be pressed, a 1 will be sent. So if the 1 is to be sent, when the button is pressed, then the initial state of the LED must be 0. That's why the initial state of the button must be 0. Now we go to our forever loop. We have our button. We have our LED. We can go for the forever programming. So write down while 1 forever loop starts here and is here. Inside it, we blink the LED. So LED is at pin C dot F2. I copy this. And I paste it again. Inside it, we will need to give some delay. So LED turns on here. Then it remains on for how much time? I make it like 200 milliseconds. And after that, it turns off for how long? 200 milliseconds again, like this. Now this will blink the LED. Will this code see no errors? Now let's uh, burn this in the microcontroller. Let me show you what is going to happen. We go step by step. So I click on write. Okay, the new code is being written. Let it write. Okay, let's get to the hardware. See the LED is blinking. But uh, our button didn't came into play. Now we program the button as well. Let's go here. Now this is the button at C dot F0 here. Copy it, paste it above it. C dot F0 double equal to 1. If the button is pressed, then what should happen? Give some delay. If the button is pressed like this, give some uh, debouncing delay. Delay MS50 will do fine. See if the button is pressed and for 50 millisecond it is still pressed, then it will go in this loop. Why I gave this debouncing delay? Because, because of some uh, uh, static shocks and other phenomena. It is possible that button may get pressed without a human finger. That because of some dust particles in the air or other stuff, button may get pressed. So 50 milliseconds means that if uh, even it is pressed because of some unknown phenomena, then uh, the code will not trigger. It will only trigger once it goes above 50 milliseconds. So a human hand, whenever presses a button, it is always above 50 milliseconds. So uh, that's why I am giving this delay. We label them as ending for. I make it like this is the ending bracket for this loop. I write ending main if like this. And if the button is not pressed, then else write down else starts here and here. Then the LED must be off. LED must not blink at all. So remove this delay, the accident. So this is. So if the button is pressed, LED will start to blink. Now see the problem with this code. So I show you what is the problem here. I write this and you will see what happens. Okay, let this code burn. Because we are using a push button, not a toggle switch, so there will be a problem here. So let it build. Okay, the code is built. See, nothing happens. Now I press the button. See, I will press this button. 
see it blinks but as i remove it it stops blinking so i keep it pressed see it's blinking but i remove it it stops so that's what we do not want we want that when the once a button is pressed it should keep on blinking until we do not press that button again so we need a forever loop we need to do some bit holding here so we go back let me zoom in so let's see that now we use a while loop here i write while one forever loop a forever loop within a forever loop starting here ending here i write it blink forever end like this so now once it will go inside it then it will keep on repeating this forever now i build this code as well and burn it in, into the microcontroller and let's see what happens click on write okay the new code is being written now there is another problem you will see what happens okay the new code is burned see that nothing is happening here but now i press the button see the code starts to bring now this fine now i want to stop it with another press see nothing happens now we also add the stopping code we have the starting code we press the button the code starts forever but it's not stopping now within this while loop we write what should we write here if the button is again pressed this thing happens again just copy it if the button is again pressed ending brackets with a debounce now if the button is again pressed i name it break loop see that now the code is working in forever loop now if the button is again pressed then what should happen it should break now this will break away the code but now see still there is a problem i build this and i show you what is the problem here now that's fine we started the code we pressed the button code started to blink now we just broke the code what is the problem here i show you let's let the code burn okay the code is burned see i press the button the code starts now i press the button again code stop but for a minute time see see it is difficult to manage we have to press the button and release it in 50 milliseconds only see sometimes it will work sometimes it will not because there is a problem now the problem is this this time is too small that human finger cannot manage to just press and release a button in 50 milliseconds if it remains one for more than 50 milliseconds then it will start all over again so we have to do some bit holding here again now in the break loop i add a forever loop so write down while one starting here another forever loop and ending here now what should happen is that whenever you go into this loop what it will do it will stay here forever that it will break the code but it will remain here forever now inside it you will write until the button do not get zero it will not uh, go ahead see once the uh, break button is pressed our problem is that whenever we press we press in more than 50 milliseconds so it starts all over again it still because it's a same button so it gets a one and it starts to blink again that's why we do, cannot manage to press it for just 50 milliseconds so what we do is that we add a forever loop now once the break button is pressed it will do nothing it will hang here now once the button is released see that whenever the button goes is pressed it goes to 1 default state of the button is 0 so if the button is pressed and released means it became 1 and after some time when we release it it becomes 0 if the button becomes 0 only then it will break the code so we add here that if just copy this now if the port c dot f1 equals to 0 now the button is pressed and we are in our forever loop i give it a marker here button break forever end like this now see that it starts here and here inside it we have a condition break now see that if we are here then it will break away from here and then it will break away from the new code now once once the break button is pressed it will go into a forever loop when we will release our break our button only then it will move ahead and it will break the whole code and will wait for the button to be pressed again so let's build and see what happens i write this code okay there is an error we deal with the error okay it is giving error here we have missed a bracket probably so it starts here ends here if here 
okay we have a problem here if we use wrong brackets it, these are these brackets they are like normal brackets like this so let's build it okay it's built successfully let's burn it i click on write let me zoom out okay the new code is being burned let's get to the hardware so this is our hardware here Okay, the new code is burned. Now I click on, see nothing is happening here, see. By default nothing is happening here. I press the button. I press this button. See the code starts. Now with the other press of the button, the code must stop. Now I press it and the button is hold. I have not released the button. I release the button, it stops, see. I press it again, it starts over again. Now this is working perfectly fine. That's what we just wanted. See, when I press the button, and hold it i may hold it forever now now it's in the while loop within a button it is waiting once the button gets zero it will break the whole loop see now it had broken the whole loop and now it's waiting for the button to be pressed again so we press the button again see now it's working as intended so guys see that i press the button see again now what is happening is that button is now our microcontroller is waiting for the button to get zeroed so now the button is 1 because I am holding it. Once I release it, it will become 0. See, it broke out of the loop. Now again, it is waiting for the button to be pressed again. See, and it starts to blink. So guys, this is as easy as that. I hope you guys learned something from this video. Thank you very much for your time and patience. Uh, this code, micro C file, will be in the description. There will be a Google Drive link. I will uh, send all the file on that link. So you can just open the link and download it. There is no charges, nothing. You simply have to just click the link and download because YouTube description do not allow to write special characters. So I cannot write the code in the description. So you do, just have to download the files. All the files, micro C files, hex files, C files will be there. And still, if you have any questions, you can ask in the comments. So guys, thank you very much and see you in the next video.